hello, my honey, hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Then you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I'm your own. There is truth in advertising, yes, I swear, yes, I swear. Got new Nikes on my feet and beat out Sassoon in my hair. I can show you the Budweiser fruit of the loom underwear. There is truth in advertising, I swear. Why would they lie to me when they love what they sell? Plus, we all know that the liars have a special fire in hell. On the television, radio, and in the magazine. The advertising got to perpetuate the American dream. And let it be, let it be Now I know that I don't need to buy Everything to try to sell me But so easily divided Is a fool and is my name is truth and advertising Let it be Why would they lie to me When they love what they sell Plus we all know that the liars Got a special fire in hell On the television, radio And in the magazines The advertising got to Staring at the idiot box Your love life is in a rut You're sitting there on your nice sofa Love can be hell, I know all too well I'm wanted by every last Trust me when I say It's a pain in the As for the WB Just watch us and see We're better than any date From now on Wednesdays We'll all be great Yeah of the mascots I can clearly remember from my childhood, none hit so hard yet feel so foggy as the WB Frog, also known as Michigan J, created by Chuck Jones back in 1955. He first appeared in a cartoon titled One Froggy Evening, where he dons his classic top hat and cane, then belts out the tune Hello My Baby by Tin Pan Alley, written back in 1899. But his few appearances across the Looney Tunes landscape, iconic as they may have been, were nothing compared to what was to come. Did you get the word, baby? Tell me, have you heard about the stuff they got on WB? Because everybody knows that WB's the place to go to entertain your family. Yeah, yeah. Parent who is playing, got the sisters and the ways on them. Dubba, 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 WB. Oh, the WB was a television network owned and operated by Warner Brothers. And if you needed somebody to actually explain that and couldn't insinuate it from the initials alone, then boy, we're in trouble. Ultimately, the WB was shut down along with UPN in preparation for the launch of yet another network, when you may know as the CW. Except the CW isn't even known as the CW anymore. The interesting thing about these two networks is that they were, in essence, essentially the same. They shot for the same demographic, teenagers and young adults, though the WB had Saturday morning cartoons, and aside from the CW becoming nothing more in the long run than a home for superhero soap operas and somewhat supernatural teen dramas, they're almost identical. The most interesting thing about this entire ordeal is that most channels don't even have a mascot, or at least a mascot that's anything other than a logo like the NBC Peacock or the CBS Eye. Most channels, in fact, don't really do any promotion outside of their own channel or some ads here and there. But the thing about launching something, be it a product or a television network, is you want people to take notice. And what better way to do that than with something they'll remember? Michigan J was already recognizable, certainly, especially for those of an older crowd, but for those of us who were children, unless we were especially cultured children like yours truly, this was our introduction to him and to the WB. In the end, what better way to capture someone's attention than with a dancing ragtime singing frog? Michigan J is a fascinating mascot because he wasn't created for the WB, like some other creatures we know. No. He was simply handpicked for the job. 
And though he's no longer around, and the WB is no longer around, there are so many references to him specifically in other media. I'd be hard-pressed to find another singular example of a mascot that doesn't exist anymore that's this well-remembered, outside of perhaps the Noid, but that's a different story for a different time. There's a big difference when something makes reference to something else that's still famous despite not being as culturally relevant anymore, like, say, a famous rock band or a really popular TV show. Those things last. They stick with us, because they themselves are cultural touchstones. Especially if it's something that was successful on a widely global scale and everyone partook in. But Michigan J, I don't know, guys. I mean, to me, this is one for the books of why is he so beloved, even today? For the 10 years that the WB dominated the airwaves, Michigan J was right there along with them, singing and dancing his way into our hearts. He also would usually appear before the opening of shows, informing the viewer of the rating for the program that they were about to watch. Then, in 2005, the WB announced some changes, and with them was the demise of Michigan J. On July 22, 2005, his death was announced by the WB chairman Garth Antsier at a fall season preview with the statement, The frog is dead and buried. Apparently, the head of programming stated that Michigan was a symbol that perpetuated the young teen feel of the network, and that's not the kind of image they wanted to put to their audience. Immediately, satirical yet all-too-honest obituaries for the mascot were published with the details on his life and death, which ranged from December 31, 1955 to July 22, 2005. B promos and bumpers, affiliate logos, and TV spots. Perhaps in a great final twist of comeuppance, almost a year later the WB ceased broadcasting altogether and signed off the air for the final time on September 17, 2006. When this happened, a white silhouette of Michigan appeared at the end of a montage of stars that had appeared on the network during its 11-year history. When the montage ended with thank you, his silhouette is shown removing his top hat and bowing to the audience for 11 years, thus bringing the WB and himself to a final close. In a rather cruel twist of fate, one of the songs Michigan sang at one point was Please Don't Talk About Me When I'm Gone, from 1930. The WB actually did resurface back in 2008 and ran until 2013 as an internet-only streaming service. They were eventually, again, usurped by the CW streaming service, The Seed. One can only imagine that perhaps, just perhaps, if they'd had a tiny frog dancing and singing for them, they might have lived on. Michigan J's legacy is, as earlier stated, bizarre to say the least. A minor character created in 1955 who goes on in the 90s to mascot for an up-and-coming television network, and despite his tenure with the network only existing for a decade and his prior short-lived career, he's still somehow iconic. He's a hazy memory at best, sure, but he's remembered. Why? Who knows? Maybe simply for the absurdity of it all, or maybe, just maybe, somewhere deep down inside all of us is a singing, dancing frog dying to break free. Gee, Daffy, I wonder who they're gonna get to pull the switch. Why me, indubitably, as I possess all of the talent around here.